I found an interesting quotation today I thought I'd share with you. The limit of our understanding is not the limit of all there is to understand. Ooh, I like that. There are a great many things about the mind we don't understand, but that doesn't mean that they're not true, that they don't happen. Let me illustrate. If I were to ask someone here to think of a piece of furniture, likewise, the first word to pop into your mind might be chair, more often than not. If I asked for a vegetable, it would be carrot. If I asked for a flower, probably rose, certainly in this city, Portland. So if I ask someone for a random word, well, outside of the fact that someone might get frisky and think of R-A-N-D-O-M, uh, there may very well be one word which normally comes to mind, and I'd like to not deal with that. So instead, I, I thought it might be uh, um, beneficial to just pull some words out of the book. So um, as I'm riffling, just tell me stop. Right there? Okay. As I'm, I'm going to pick out some, some nice challenging words here, and as I'm going through, say nothing, betray no thoughts to me at the present time, but simply put one of these words in your mind and hopefully we'll, it'll, it'll be one you can spell. Fair enough? Okay. Birthstone, playground, calculator, dynamite, Treadmill, Ugh. Outlander, Brainstem, Monastery, Forecasting, Orientals. That's enough. Do you have one of those words in your mind right now, sir? Right. Good. Do this for me, please. Concentrate on that word. See it spelled out in block letters, just like on the game show Wheel of Fortune. In the challenge round at the very end, Vanna White has all of those letters spelled out on the board. And then in the challenge round, people will um, try to figure what letter might be in that word. So I may not get the letters in the word in the appropriate order, but let's see if I can pull some, some of them out of your mind right now. I'm getting a sense of a... Um, would the letter A be in your word, sir? Yes. Yes, it is. Concentrate now. I'm seeing straight lines. T, would the letter T be in your word? Yes. Yes. Let me buy a vowel. <laughs> would there happen to be an E? No. No. Stand up, please. Concentrate on that word. Place it in your mind. I'm seeing, yes, there is an A. There, there is a T. Not much of a clue, is it? Um, I also see the letter R. All right. I see the letter O. All right. I see the letter L. All You're right. thinking of the word calculator. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a delightful word test. By the way, did you notice I say word test, not book test? Now, I'm going to lecture you for a minute. Because you see, the way we speak, the way we think, affects the way we react to other people. There are some wonderful items on the market. They're called book tests. But you see, when you think of book test, you're thinking of the book and you're placing extra value on the book itself. If you instead think word test, that's the object as far as the audience is concerned. It's a word. But you have to justify in advance the use of a book. I mean, otherwise you could just say, here, think of a word. Good, got it. Pull it out of the person's mind. Well, we can't do that. What we have to do somehow is to get some other clue. We have to get the word out of a book. So did you notice in the presentation the way it was formed? Well, I, I could have asked you, if I'd asked for a vegetable, it would be carrot, a piece of furniture, a chair, a flower, a rose. What I've done is I've justified the reason why we can't simply have somebody suggest a word. So instead, we'll pull one out of a book. Now, by the way, when I came out and read the quote, that was simply another way to justify the presence of the book. 
that's all, okay? Now this particular piece is called the when, whenever, anytime, wherever, anytime word test. And there's a real good reason for it. You see, when he told me when to stop, and I opened the book, and I read the words, I wasn't reading the words out of this book. I was giving you a pre-written list of words. Okay, as a matter of fact, the words, oh, wait a minute, are right here. I'll show them to you. Oops. Look familiar? Birthstone, playground, calculator, dynamite, treadmill, outlander, brainstem, monastery, forecasting, and orientals. Now, Lee, how did you manage to remember all those words? It's easy, piece of cake. I'll show you how, okay? Because you see, every mentalist worthy of the name mentalist has a memory system, a mnemonic system, but it's not hard. I'll show you how easy it is. You see, when you want to remember something, the brain works best with pictures. So you create a really wild, weird, odd, scatological, if you care, picture in your mind to demonstrate. Now, you must have also something to relate it to. You can't file things away in a file till you build the file cabinet. So the first thing we do is build our mental file cabinet. It's the easy, you already have it in your mind. We're going to use the words one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There are 10 words. Then we rhyme them to get a picture of a thing, because a picture of a one, a picture of a two, it's kind of difficult to, to imagine. So instead of we rhyme, one is a gun. Two is a shoe. Oh, you've heard this lecture before. Three is a tree, good. Four is a door. Five is a? Hive, good. Six is? Sticks. Stick. Seven is? Heaven, Heaven. good. Uh, eight is a? A gate, or in this case, a plate, and you'll understand why in a second. Nine is a mine, and ten is a pen. So now we have pictures of all those things, and here's how it works. Look. One is a gun. Instead of a bullet, it's shooting a birthstone. So put that picture in your mind. One is a gun, and there's that birthstone coming out instead of a bullet. Fair enough? Two is a shoe, and here's this giant shoe, and it's about to stomp right on this kid on the slide on the playground. So two is a shoe, and it's a playground, all right? You'll all be able to do this in about another three minutes. Three is a tree. It's a Christmas tree in this case, and the present underneath it is a big calculator, and also hanging all over instead of ornaments are little calculators. So three is a tree, and you're talking about calculators. Four is a door, and in front of that door is a big chunk of dynamite ready to blow it open. All right, remember, the weirder, the wilder, the crazier, the easier it is to remember. So four is a door, and you have dynamite. Five is a hive, and there's the hive hanging in the tree, and the bees are about to sting the guy who's exercising outside under a full moon on a treadmill. I, look, I just picked these things out of clip art on my computer, okay? That was the only thing for a, a treadmill that I had. But anyway, five is a hive, and the bees are about to sting the guy on the treadmill. Put that picture in your mind. Here's six. Six is sticks, in this case, hockey sticks. A whole bunch of them made almost like a bonfire, and the guy we're gonna burn is this outlander, this alien. I tried to picture the word outlander. You may wonder how I got these words. I'll explain that in a second. But the uh, outlander, the alien, is in the middle of all these hockey sticks. Six is sticks. There's our outlander. Seven is heaven. That's the pearly gates we're looking at here. Now you know why we don't use eight as a gate, because we get confused. So seven is heaven, and there's the brain stem being admitted to heaven through the pearly gates. Now not, uh, eight is a plate. And there's that monastery, like uh, we've all seen in the, in the fantasy movies, that monastery on top of the hill. Well, it's on this great big giant plate. So eight is a plate, and on top of the plate, monastery. Nine is a mine, as in a gold mine. There's the gold mine back in the hills, and the mining cart is up here. And right here is this, is this weather guy. He's doing his forecasting. Okay, so nine is a mine, and out front is the guy who's forecasting. And finally, 10 is a pen, and this pen is drawing orientals, oriental ladies. Now, I know that oriental is not a politically correct word. We should use Asians. Unfortunately, Asians doesn't have all the right letters in it. So we use orientals, and there's all those oriental ladies being drawn by the pen. So now, you tell me, one is a gun, what's the word? Birthstone. Two is a shoe. Playground. Good. Three is a tree. Calculator. Good. Four is a door. 
Dynamite. You got it. Five is a hive. Treadmill. Treadmill. Six is sticks. Outlander. Outlander. Got it. Seven is heaven. Brainstem. Brainstem. Uh, eight is a plate. Monastery. Monastery. Nine is a mine. Forecasting. Forecasting. Good. And uh, don't, don't say weatherman. Forecasting. And finally, ten is a pen and it's drawing. Orient. Orient. Hey, you guys are great. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> All right. Now, here's the reason those words are important. They were chosen for a real specific reason. And those of you who solve cryptograms will understand the reason. We use the ten most common letters in the English language. Actually, in this case, nine. The letters are A, T, E, R, N, S, O, I, and L. As a matter, and then they're not necessarily in that order. But I put them in that order because that in itself is a mnemonic. That's a way to remember the words or the letters A T E R N S O I L. Look, A, that's easy. A. T E R N, a turn is an Arctic seagull. Turn. And soil is dirt, soil. Okay? So that way you always call off the letters in that order. Why? I'll show you why. You see, the very first word on the list, birthstone, it does not have an A in it. So therefore, if he was thinking birthstone and I said, I'm getting an impression of an A, he says, no, I stop right there. I know it's the first word. One is a gun, birthstone. All right. The second word, playground, has an A in it, but no T. So therefore, if I say, I see an A, he says, yes. I see a T. Mm -mm. Well, it's the second word. Let's see, T. Second word, two is a shoe. Playground must be playground. There it is. And likewise, A and T are both in calculator, but no E. A, T, and E are in dynamite, but no R, and so on, all the way down to the end of the list. So therefore, if you're lucky and he's thinking of, uh, say, the word orientals, you have just read his mind amazingly. I see an A, I see a T, I see an E, I see an N, I see an R. By now he's kissing your ring. I see an S, an O, an I, an L, U, and he says, yes, they're all there. The word you're thinking of is orientals. Now, in case you'd like to do this and repeat it for another audience, there is a second list of words. We're not going to memorize all these tonight, class. This will be your homework for tomorrow. But this is another set of words also which works on the A-T-E-R-N-S-O-I-L. Clothespin, harmonica, blackout, hailstone, lubricate, unearthly, tarnished, treason, notaries, and relations. It works either way. By the way, now that I've shown you how easy it is to do the memory, you don't have to do the memory. Okay? Isn't that awful? Because, you see, the bookmark, <laughs> that's right, the bookmark is also a cue sheet. Uh, and here, here are the words right here, you see. Birthstone, playground, calculator, dynamite, treadmill, outlet. The other set of ten words is also up here. All right. So as long as you have this bookmark, you don't even have to do the memory. But I would, really would suggest doing the memory instead because that way you can walk into a home at a private party, pull any appropriate book off the shelf. I wouldn't suggest the Holy Bible because words like uh, brainstem and outlander simply aren't there. Uh, but if you can find any suspense novel of this type, all of those words would seemingly come from that. Don't pick Alice in Wonderland or a kiddie book, but just almost any other book. Now suppose you want to work from a dictionary. That's well, a little tougher. Well, the way you work from a dictionary is, wait a minute, you use one of these. Because I've made up a bookmark that has words in alphabetical order. Imagine this were a dictionary. Now, I haven't memorized these, but imagine this were a dictionary. And I said, uh, we'll start back here in the back uh, and just as I'm going through these uh, words, just pick out one. Here's one. Whenever, university, trademark, substitute, sandal, relative. Pigtail, orchid, medicine. Did you notice that we're going through the words in reverse order? Because I'm paging through from the back of the dictionary. Also, there were like two words with the letter S, starting with the letter S, because S is a big section of the dictionary. Okay, we didn't hit all the words. Didn't do any X's and Y's and Z's. But anyway, now you've got all those words, but those don't work on that little, that little table with the A-T-E-R-N-S-O-I-L. How do you get those words if you're using a dictionary. Well, you turn the bookmark over. <laughs> and all you need to do is pump for one thing, and that's the third letter in the word. You see, all of these words were selected because each one of them has a different third letter. 
So you say, concentrate on the first letter. No, no, wait, don't concentrate on the first letter. That's too easy. The second letter, no, that's almost always a vowel. Concentrate on the third letter and send that letter mentally to this person right over here. Well, what letter did you get? <laughs> Just say one. A. Was it an A? Yeah. Amazing! You have the gift as well. You also look on your list and all, <laughs> all of the words are in alphabetical order by the third letter. Okay? So if he happened to say A and it was correct, then you know it's the first one on the list and that word happens to be trademark. More often than not, it won't be. He'll say A and was that correct? No. Why don't you let a pro take over? But now you know, oh, by the way, what letter was it? P. Oh, well. All right. Watch how a pro does it. Now you just go down here, find the third letter P. Oh, that would be impression. And now you're ready to go again. Okay? And if, by the way, you do use a bookmark, I would suggest that you have another semi-duplicate bookmark made up that is really a bookmark that you can leave behind. This also has some lovely quotes on it. For example, Albert Einstein, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. Nice quote. Anyway, that particular whenever, anywhere book test is the brainchild of a fellow you're going to be hearing about a whole lot more. Uh, he's worked um, the uh, state fair circuit, he's worked corporations, he's done television, he's an East Coast mentalist, lives in New Jersey, his name is Ty Kralin, he called it Whenever, Anywhere. I hope you like it.